Welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Tony Suriani Podcast. I am thrilled to have our friend Bob Milligan, who's uh, head of 1792 Wealth Advisors, you can see displayed behind him. And uh, we're glad to have you, Bob. Uh, actually, you know, making me feel good, like I have a little more hair today than I, than I did true. before. Yeah, <laughs> I shaved it this morning just to keep us, uh, to make you look good. <laughs> I appreciate that, brother. <laughs> I really do. So tell us a little bit about uh, 1792, how you, uh, you know, how you got here. I know you, you've been in the industry a while. I think it's an interesting story. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. First of all, thanks for uh, having me. It's, uh, we really appreciate our partnership with Advisor Hub. Uh, it's exciting time to be an independent advisor and you guys are really the, the voice of the industry. So it's, uh, it's terrific. Right. Um, I started in a business in 1996. Uh, I, I started as an advisor at Merrill Lynch, uh, you know, cold Dude. calling my way to success, like many advisors. Um, and today we've built an independent firm that uh, we partner with Raymond James as our broker dealer and corporate RIA. Um, and we help advisors that are thinking about going independent, uh, evaluate leaving their firms and then helping them through the transition to helping them with their business operations. Yeah. And, and then you, you, and what you've built is interesting because you, you know, I'm obviously familiar with the Raymond James platform, you know, too, it's a great, it's a great one. And then you've sort of coupled on that some of your own, I mean, you, you still have a book. I do. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the, 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 the origin of this, uh, I was, a uh, an advisor for many, many years. Uh, I had an itch to be going to management, um, but back in the nineties and some wise person once said to me, Hey, never give up your, your clients, right? They're, they're really important. And I'm glad I listened. Um, but I had an opportunity to manage, uh, back in 2011 as a producing manager and, um, you know, cutting my teeth as that manager, uh, I was in a branch of Smith Barney, if you recall back then, there was a lot of uh, going on in the industry. They had just been taken over by Morgan Stanley. There were a lot of unhappy advisors from the culture perspective, the way they were being managed, uh, economics, uh, some of the technology. And uh, it's sort of where I had the aha moment. I said, boy, wouldn't it be kind of cool if I could build a branch uh, or a firm uh, at a place, a company, a corporate uh, a partner that actually cared about clients, put their clients a head of all else, the interest yeah. of clients, all else, and, and treated their advisors like clients, where those advisors could have better economics with a management team that actually was in working in their best interest to help them in the businesses. And that's sort of how we got going. Uh, that was the vision for 1792. And, you know, when we, when they closed our branch uh, back in 2014, when our lease was up, um, we had uh, 11 advisors with about $800 million in, in AUM with about $7 million of revenue. And, and today, 1792, uh, after six and a half years, we launched in August of 2017, has a billion and a half dollars of AUM, uh, just under $10 million of revenue with 15 advisors. So it's kind of interesting. I tell my my kids all the time, I'm like, if uh, it's really interesting when you set goals, uh, you know, how, how they become reality. So Yeah, well, I also, we, you know, we lived through some of those uh, same times. And, you know, obviously, I came to some of the same uh, conclusions that, that, that you did. But some of the things that are, I mean, look, there, there's a, there's a, a lot out there right so it's a lot for advisors to you know kind of sift through what i think is interesting about you still being a producer is that you're what you're doing with your advisors sort of help because you're 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 a big producer right so it's it's a, it's you're, you're sort of saying the, i do things a certain way you could do them too right it's always great to have some help yeah and i think that's one of the things that makes us different than uh, a lot of the other options for advisors that are thinking about going independent now, at the end of the day uh, I am a producer. I've got clients. I've been doing it since 1996. Those clients are like family to me. Uh, they're the most important thing. And I think that perspective, uh, getting up every day, running a firm and managing the business of a firm, uh, you know, changes the lens, right? It's not just about profitability. It's about um, looking at the business. Uh, and again, remember, the advisors that are joining us are typically W-2 employees at a wirehouse, right? They've They've been told by management for many, many years, uh, operate like an entrepreneur. But the reality is, is they have little control. No, they're not entrepreneurs. They're, they're not would, entrepreneurs. I mean, it's yeah. like football. You know, when they say, when you say it's a game, I say it's a business. When I say it's a business, you say it's a game. You're an entrepreneur until, you know, hey, support you. Go buy your own staff. You're, yeah, you're, right. You're staff. Manage a balance sheet, control your right. P&L, hire and manage, provide right. benefits, uh, you know, all, all that stuff. And advisors, you know, but they're looking over the fence and saying, hey, 
boy, it'd be kind of interesting if uh, if I could go independent, right? I, the the economics I understand are better. Uh, I own my <clears throat> business. I, I I have equity or enterprise value. Right. Well, that's that's kind of the key too, right? Yeah. Own, but but the other thing, you know, for advisors and uh, you know. A lot of people think they're an entrepreneur, but they're really not. There's there's a lot there's there's a lot that goes into sort of you can have an, an entrepreneur's mindset, and you maybe want to be in a place where that can thrive, but you know actually, you know, doing the work uh, is 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 pretty hard. And that's where that's where we come in, right? So we we work with advisors to help them uh, become entrepreneurs, but we take some of the heavy lifting off the branch well, operation. They, 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 they can be an entrepreneur in their business. They are, yeah, right. Yeah. So rather than in the larger business, you don't have to worry about the, you know, all the stuff, you know, a, HR and, and compliance, and you know, you don't have to, you don't you don't have to, it's, you don't have to put all that stuff together. We've built an infrastructure or an ecosystem, as we call it, that that helps that advisor with all the business operations. We take the Middle and back office uh, operations like managing your support staff, 401k, healthcare, uh, compliance and supervision. We we provide that for those advisors. Um, they still own their businesses, though. They are entrepreneurs, right? They 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 are often some of our advisors are in their own real estate uh, with their own support folks. Um, but they are we're providing that that air support for them every day uh, where they need it. Um, it brings up it brings up an interesting point because. The what you hear today, this is the biggest, you know, the biggest talk in the industry is all about equity and enterprise value, right? The, the, those are the two things you hear, and of course, it's it's really linked to being an entrepreneur and owning a, your own business. True, and I have opinions about that, as you as we've talked I've about. I've heard them. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I may, I approach this again, I built the firm, we built Roof 1792, because I wanted to have a place where my friends, I've been doing this for north of 28 years, uh, where I could have my friends come, right? So, so we're all about education and transparency, uh, about all things operating your practice in an independent platform. And, and equity is one of those that is a, a lot of buzz around equity, right? Yeah. There's a lot of transactions happening in the market, and there's uh, a lot of transactions that are, higher, that are happening at higher multiples, but there's also a lot of misinformation, right? And you and I have talked about, listen, there's only a hundred cents on every dollar, right? There's only a hundred cents every dollar. And when you're leaving your firm and going to a new firm, there's three components, right? It's about payout, uh, upfront, right? Or equity, right? And so our approach is, is, hey, we're going to, we we push down, uh, we operate 1792 at very thin margins. We push down the highest payout for those advisors that are, that are, that we we can, um, and we focus on enterprise value, not equity, right? And there's a, there's a key distinction between the two. I, I think equity can be opaque. It could be lack of transparency. You could have oh, lack of totally. control. You have, you have people talking about it. Nobody, half people don't know what they're talking about. Don't understand. And, and the crazy thing about advisors, I've said many times, they're like the cobbler's kids who have no shoes, right? They're not, they're not asking the right questions. If this was an investment for their clients, Yes. You no, know they would be absolutely all, all over it, you know. And but for themselves, for some reason, they 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 don't put themselves in a spot where they can find out. So true. And I and I say, hey, look, at you 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 once you leave your firm and go independent, right? You're 1099. You own your enterprise, right? You now that becomes your largest asset, right? You know, when you look at the valuation on that, once your assets are are at the new home, uh, that could be largest asset that you own. And we approach it from the perspective, and this goes to our ecosystem, this goes to me being an advisor. So I have spent a lot of time uh, trying to scale my business, right? So we have, as, as an industry, have gone to every training and every consultant on, on how to create more scale and efficiency in your business. But I actually, it's a passion of mine, right? I, I have worked to build a business that is all fee-based, tight investment advisory practice, financial planning, great client service model, profitable uh, and if you apply those business concepts to your practice, you increase your enterprise value. It becomes worth more. You focus on profitability. You focus on creating a world-class client service and creating capacity and scale in that practice. And what happens is, is that business becomes more valuable. Now, well, you're growing and you own the growth, right? So you that's right. And if you you need to be in a place though that can help you grow. Or, or maybe have a, a guy with an example that can show you, hey, this is this is how it's done. Exactly, and and, and what what we find is, and and you have conversations with advisors all the time, right? Is that that 
advisors sort of get look at these large multiples, right? And they 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 sort of get it's like the moth to the light, right? It's like I got to understand this, and I want to sell my business with this big pile of money. What they don't understand is they may be in their early fifties, and when you actually ask them what their goals are with their practice, they say, "Well, I'm going to work for another twenty years." Well, then my point is, is then why are you selling a lien on your cash flow for the next twenty years by taking a pile of cash today that you may not even understand what that pile of cash or the equity combination of cash and equity, what it's worth. So again, there's, it is true. It is true. And what's happening is, is that practices are worth more by being part of a larger organization, right? When you look at multiples that valuations today, a singular practice an advisor doing $800,000 in revenue, that's highly fee-based with a good client, you know, good broad client base is probably worth five or six times EBITDA, you know, or two, to two and a half times revenue, right? And yeah. listen, a firm of our size, you know, if we were ever to have a transaction, you know, it's probably worth 10 to 12 times EBITDA, right? But it's, it's we're not necessarily for sale. And quite frankly, Tony, I've been really focused on next generation. I mean, you know, if you, if you really, yeah. you know, if you ask me in my heart of hearts that I really am focused on how do we build a legacy practice where advisors have a place where they can retire uh, and a and achieve a much higher valuation on their practice because they're at a place where they they're leveraging the ecosystem. Those right. clients are happy. They're leveraging our client service models. There's a higher degree uh, of of, uh, of of lack of attrition in those clients when that advisor retires. And so we're focused on G two right now. It's a big focus for us. It's it's finding the next generation of advisors. Well, to that's help also us that's, that's tough. In that business. That's a tough spot because a lot of people are looking for you know it, it's hard to find these these uh, G two folks because um, we 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 got to do a better job of getting people in the industry. Well, when you and I started and we were at Merrill, you said you cold called, so did I, but that was. Um, uh, we we had a pretty robust training program. <laughs> there was a book yeah. with an eighty percent failure rate, but it was still a uh, you know people half of Wall Street was trained by Merrill Lynch. That's right, and, and you know, and today what's interesting about our partnership with Raymond James is Raymond James has an unbelievable training program. So that's a great that's a that's a great point because yeah, they, there's very there aren't that many firms that have it, and if you're independent, it's really hard to find. If you, that's if right. You're, it, Independent. It's very hard to find people to come in and work for. I, 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 I all often say the best job you can have is to fail out of the Merrill Lynch training program because then you're licensed, you, you've trained, right. stuff, you've got a couple of clubs, but there's no more training program you fail out of anymore. That's right. Yeah. And our, our approach is, is we leverage Raymond James pro, training program. It's called the AMP program. And it's similar to what we went through back when yeah. I was in the PDP program uh, at Merrill Lynch. Uh, the you know visits to the home office, and because of our size, of our scale, multiple advisors, that advisor gets exposure to all different types of practices. We have 15 advisors here. So that advisor gets to work in a mentor relationship. And for our retiring advisors, those advisors are beginning to work with clients. They get their CFPs, their CMAs, their CFAs, right. um, and they get action and, and opportunity to work directly with uh, you know some of those clients. And it's uh, and we are hopeful that we're building a legacy business where advisors can retire out and we've got the next generation. Yeah, and then but that that also requires succession from your end right so you 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 got the, you, and there's a financial element to that there's a lot of things to 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 work on yeah and we and we approach succession just like uh, everything else with our partnership with Raymond James Raymond James you know what again is is the, one of the reasons we chose Raymond James number one is the culture right Raymond James really has a culture that is advisor client centric meaning they they stated put their clients put our clients interest above all else and they treat their advisors like clients and it's it's in the DNA. And that was really important to us from a values perspective. Um, Raymond James also is, has a robust platform. They spent over $700 million on technology last year. Uh, the their, the home office infrastructure for an advisor leaving the wirehouse, Merrill Morgan, UBS, Wells, which are which are platform rich, advisor doesn't, we don't want for anything relative to those firms. I mean, I say from the screen back, Raymond James provides all the plumbing and everything we need to operate much like we did uh, prior. Um, but from the screen forward, we get to create our experience, right? The local experience uh, is what it's all about. And that's what our business structure is. It's more of a collaborative culture. We believe in leveraging uh, great ideas and, and resources of our internal advisors and our teams um, and developing that. And it's sort of our- That's actually another interesting point, which is that um, you know today, especially we mentioned young people coming in, uh, it, it's- harder and harder we're in an apprentice business 
you, you got to be able to talk to people or at least have an entity that you can get everybody together at, at different points to sort of share ideas and share, you know, uh, that's how you learn. Yeah, and, and, you know, listen, our namesake is 17, you know, we're in 1792 Wealth Advisors. The name is after the Buttonwood Agreement, which we're coming up on today's May 14th, May 17th, 1792. An agreement was signed by 24 traders. Uh, and that agreement ultimately became the New York Stock Exchange, right? Those 24 traders were were better together uh, than apart. And that's sort of our, our philosophy. That's our, that's our mission in that um, we believe that independent advisors are better together uh, and stronger together than apart. And it's really a supported independence. Uh, you know, we say, uh, you know, uh, independent, but not alone is really our MO. And it's also uh, the year Kentucky uh, entered the union. So there's actually a terrific okay. bourbon uh, 1792 bourbon. And oh, that, I'm that familiar bourbon. with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't know why 17. I figured 1792 bourbon was that was, uh, yeah. was the reason that was. Um, well, look, I, that's kind of a high note. I feel like I want to, I want to, you know, a, a, end on that. Is there anything else that, that, that do you want to talk about with the industry that I didn't um, get to get in front of? No, I just, I think it's an exciting time for both of us, right? I mean, I think uh, as advisors are beginning to recognize that there is a tremendous world out there uh, relative to what they've been doing as a W-2 employee. Uh, and there's a lot of choices. You know, we're, 1792 is is not right for every advisor, right? We're a smaller firm. We, certain type of advisors are a good fit. But I I think it's, uh, if you working in an environment as a W-2 uh, you've got to go out and kick the tires and, and understand what this is all about because technology today uh, has created an opportunity where uh, advisors can go independent in all different shapes and sizes and and, and really have the opportunity to uh, build a great business, uh, continue to, to grow a great business on this side. Yeah, you, you got to be able to talk to somebody and, and get a straight answer about equity and things like that. Make sure if you, if yeah, you, have, well, you have to scratch your head at all, you know. Yeah, we could spend two hours talking talking about that when, once we once I get going on that. But I, you know, if anybody's, you know, I, I would be, I'd love to talk about that and, and understand it. And there's no perfect answer, right? It's like anything else. It's about what's important to you at your, at the time where you are with your business practice in life. Right. Well, thanks a lot. I, look, we really appreciate it, Bob. Thanks for being here. I'm, we'll talk to you again. I'm sure we'll have yeah. other, other topics that get us going. So thanks, thanks for being here. Sounds good. Appreciate it, Tony. Yeah. Take care.